Remember this thing? Or better yet, remember me? Yep, we both still exist. I'm doing okay, uh, but the Sigma is still in the same state as it was last time you saw it. For those of you who need a quick catch up, this is my BCN 3D Sigma R17, which I had purchased and reviewed a lifetime ago. After six months, it started developing a ton of issues. I had tried to upgrade pretty much every single part of it, but it was all for nothing. So I started stripping it down to its bare bones in order to give it a bit of an overhaul. So at this point, we basically just have the frame, which needs to get populated with some serious spec up parts. Starting off with the Dua 3D 6AC board and a four point something panel do touchscreen, which were donated by the awesome folks at Dua 3D for this project. Now, originally the plan was to install a couple of Hemera Revo direct extruders on it, which then would be converted to the Hemera XS to reduce the size and the weight. These would work perfectly with the Do It 3D tool boards as they work with the CAN bus connection, meaning I'd only need four wires to travel from the extruders all the way to the Do It boards, eliminating all the ribbon cables that originally plagued the Sigma. Now, since I took my sweet time to get back onto this project, times have changed, technology has evolved, and E3D has developed the Revo Roto, which is what I will now be using. All this thanks to E3D, of course, which are sponsoring the series. The Roto will take up much less space, way much less, and will just make it that much cooler. We will start off by installing the panel do touchscreen. I want this to be as seamless as possible, meaning I don't want to just splatter the touchscreen on the front of the frame with standoffs, make a 3D printed cover for it, and just have it protrude like five meters out of the front of the machine. I want this to be as flush as possible, with, within reason, of course, and within my capabilities. So I will have to install it from inside the frame. Since the panel do is bigger than the original screen, I will need to cut out some material to fit the new screen. I'll also be setting the screen with standoffs behind the frame, that way the screen will be actually recessed rather than protruding outwards. This version of the panel do screen also has an additional controller board that plugs into it. However, just plugging this directly to the board would make the screen placement I have in mind a bit impossible, as it would be quite large on the right side of the screen, which would hit the side of the frame. So what I will do instead is use short jumper cables and have the controller board sitting just behind the screen on the frame. That way it won't interfere with the placement of the screen. Now the top left edge of the panel do will protrude slightly out of the frame. However, I am not too worried about this as I do have half a plan in mind on how to fix that. The alternative would be for me to trim the PCB edge of the board, which knowing my luck would probably ruin the screen, so I'll just skip that part. And instead, plan to make a front lower panel cover on the frame, which will end up also covering the SD card slot that I don't plan on using. It will have a running edge, which will cover the protruding screen corner, but it will also contain a lock mechanism for the enclosure. Hopefully it will also include some other fun things which I don't need to get into just yet. Right, now that all that has been decided, it's time to start doing some measurements, markings, and use my trusty Dremel to cut out the extra room needed for the screen. Now one of the things I've learned in all these years in 3D printing is, always use the tools available at your disposal to make your life easier. Since this screen will sit at the back of the frame, finding the right position might be a bit tricky. So I made a 3D printed stencil that replicates the screen position and also the standoffs. This way, instead of constantly measuring back and forth and hoping that I get it right, I can simply place the stencil on the front, hold it in place with some masking tape and mark up where I need to slice and dice. Now I know that the end result won't be the prettiest of works, uh, but it's okay. I just need it to be the right size and placement. Everything else can be made to look pretty down the road. For the most part, in these initial stages at least, it's all a matter of making sure everything fits and everything works as it should. Once the cutting is done, it's just a matter of cleaning up any debris and filing off the sharp and sticky uppy bits for safety. Drill a few holes and pray that I got this all right for a change. 
And thankfully I did get it right. So as mentioned, the top left standoff will be sorted at a later stage, but all in all, I am happy with this, which means I can move on to the main board. I will be installing this pretty much in the same position as the previous board, with some minor changes. The frame is full of welded screws and screw inserts, so for the most part I am removing these for a cleaner look. Once the build is fully done, I do plan on disassembling everything, respraying the whole frame so it doesn't have to look pretty for now. After removing any extra bits of the frame, I place the board on the final position that I believe it should be in. Then I simply mark the places where I need to drill holes for the standoffs that will secure it to the frame. It's then just a matter of drilling the holes into the frame, tapping them with the right size thread, screwing in the standoffs, and then installing the board with some M3 screws. All that's left to install now is the controller board of the screen, so it's just repeating the same process as the board by marking the holes, drilling them, installing the standoffs, and securing it with some screws. Once all this was done, I did spend a few minutes just doing a mock-up cover for the screen in order to test the fit. This is by no means the final form, but I just want to get a feel of how it would fit. Now, since I cut this by hand, I just need to do a couple of iterations in order to get the positions of the screw holes correctly and the frame as well. As a side note, I do want to say that this project kind of encapsulates the beauty of open source. Seeing as the Sigma is open source, along with the Do It 3D boards, I downloaded a bunch of CAD files and now I am easily able to prototype the parts I need to modify and test which makes life so much easier because I have the whole original assembly right on screen and I can just move on from there. Now in the next episode in the series, which I promise you will not take as long as this one did, I will start working on the x-axis. Now in my honest opinion, this is one of the weakest parts of the BCN 3D Sigma and it's what let it down. Firstly is the tiny NEMA 14 stepper motors which burn out constantly. Secondly, it's the lack of rigidity on the whole assembly with flexing happening at every corner and even the rail itself is not straight. After speaking to Jason from LDO Motors, I did decide that rather than completely redesigning the brackets to fit NEMA 17 motors, I will use the longer NEMA 14 motors which are also used in the Vorum V0 version. These stepper motors are tried and tested, so I definitely know they can handle the task. As for the rigidity of the whole x-axis assembly, I will be adding some reinforcement parts on the side of the brackets, and I will also be swapping out the main x-axis rail with 2020 extrusions, but I will get into that in the next video. In the meantime, thanks for watching, thanks for the patience, take care of yourselves, and happy making guys.